I'm Dr. Scott Fuller. On this segment, I'd like to talk about exercising with a happy back and a happy neck. Too many of my patients come to me for chiropractic care for the first time after injuring themselves, working out, and doing exercise. I'll give you a couple of recent examples. One of my patients, a man in his late 30s, was doing one of those popular high intense video programs at home. And after one workout, he felt some lower back stiffness and soreness. And it mostly resolved after the course of a week. So we did it again. And then two days later, he's completely crippled because he was just going simply too hard. That's lesson number one, too hard. Another patient of mine came in because he was doing cable rows, rows, cable rows at a gym and putting the weight back. He had injured himself, injured his disc pretty bad. He's been out for months now, working with me for a couple of months also. So we don't want to go too hard. And there's always alternatives to some of the unsafe machines, more on that in a minute, uh, at home. I've had people at boot camps and other exercise classes, group classes, hurting themselves. So rule number one is don't go too hard, too fast. We're all desperate to get fit. We all want that quantum leap to get better immediately, right? We want to be thin and fit and strong and lean and, and so forth. That's not going to happen quickly. It's going to happen over time and it is a process. So keep that in mind. You don't want to end up in my office with a herniated ne neck disc or lower back disc. Now you're out for six months, can't exercise, and that sets you back that, that much further. So start casually in a group format. And it doesn't matter to me if it's Pilates or yoga or boot camp or whatever else that you're doing. If you're the first one to cut out in a particular exercise from the group, be the first one. When I go to yoga, I'm always the wimpy one out of the poses before anybody else. Because I know if I go too hard, I could yank this, twist that, make myself too sore. And then I'm at my chiropractic office and taking time off. That's something we don't want to do. Go easy, ramp it up. You can always live to fight another day. That's the idea. Number two, during any exercises, particularly at a gym, particularly with resistance exercise and weights, if it feels like it's putting stress into your neck or your back, it is. Ease off, change your, change your routine, modify that particular exercise, drop the weight, or just completely find something else. Going back to that young man that was doing the cable rows, okay? Now that's the machine that you're sitting at at the gym, your legs are out in front of you, and the rowing part of the machine is attached to a cable and a stack of weights. You know what I'm talking about. So the cable row. The danger with that machine is usually not doing the exercise. This part is usually okay unless you're using too much weight. The problem with that machine is what do you do with the weight when you're done? You have to reach really far over putting it down or when you're grabbing it initially you have to reach really far over to pull it into position. I've had several people over the years hurt themselves getting in and out of the cable row machine. So be careful doing that. Other exercises, I had a patient who had never deadlifted before and he starts doing a deadlift and he blows out his disc in his lower back and he's out for six months, he's not working, okay? He, excuse me, he's working but not working out. And it took us about three months to put him back together again in my chiropractic office. So if you're doing something new for the first time, how about do this? And a lot of the trainers that I know and a lot of the class leaders and boot camp leaders that I know, they're very careful to tell people, go slow, go easy, go light. For some people, you just do the motion and a lot of these new gyms now, they have plastic bars to start with or wooden bars, almost like a broomstick. Great way to start. So you would start getting into these motions just with the weight of a wooden stick or a plastic bar. That is a great way to do it. So you can really get the right form as you're doing things, okay? So if you're doing some new lifts for the first time, try to do it with no weight. You can do it for weeks with no weight. I have one patient right now who started a new workout program and is going to a gym and has consultation and he's doing some group class work. For weeks now, he's been going through these new maneuvers and these new lifting techniques with only a plastic bar. So he can really get it down and give his back a chance to catch up and become stabilized. That's very important. 
Now in future shows, what I'm going to be doing with you is I'm going to be doing some light workouts with dumbbells and resistance exercise and so forth. And maybe we'll have some guests come on and some experts at this and come on and, and do some exercise classes with us. But I'm going to show you some exercises in the future that are going to teach us that you can work out on your own at home and get resistance exercise without hurting yourself. I believe all of us need to be doing resistance exercise unless you're already a, a gardener or a bricklayer or something that you're doing physical exercise for all the time. A hundred years ago we didn't have gymnasiums because we didn't need them. We built our own brick walls and, and garden our own food and so on and so forth. Built our own houses. So we're always using our muscles and so forth. But now so many of us just sit all day, we need to supplement that with weight training, resistance training and so forth. Or just body weight. And by the way, when I say weights, you don't necessarily need weights. Oftentimes it's just your body weight and some resistance and bands and so forth. We'll get into that later on in some, some future shows. But I wanted to set you up uh, so you're not injuring yourself in these weight training programs and exercise and so forth in the classes and people going too hard and I just see way too many injuries and it's just terrible. So start slow. In addition, consider the wellness chiropractic care option. Too many people wait for the crisis so their neck blows out and their back blows out and then they call me. That's backwards. If you're going to be going into intense exercise, get yourself evaluated by a chiropractor first. Find out where your body is, where your spine is. Get your spine in, in shape because that is the core of your body, if you will. And I will be doing another core exercise program for you too in the future. That's the core part of your body. So you want to make sure that that's stable, in shape, and aligned before you undergo care. My last point to you is this, and this is very important because this just happened this week in my office. A man came in for the first time and he had some back trouble. And he told me, you know, I've been walking and doing some bicep curls just to get going. And there's a problem with that. So basically we can divide the body into front muscles and back muscles. Okay? Front muscles would be, if you will, bicep and pec muscles. The back muscles are the back and tricep. So if I exercise a lot in the front, that's going to do this. You see? And then you might see some big guys in the gym walking around like this. All right? We want to avoid that. So if we're going to help our spine and our posture, we want to work more back and more tricep exercises or muscles on the back side of our body. The legs are a little bit different. I'll discuss that at another time. So here's the rule that I set up for people. For every, if for every chest exercise, do two in the back. For every bicep exercise, do two tricep. So do double the exercises on the back side of the body. There's reasons why we don't work the back side of the body quite as much is because it's harder, they tend to be longer levers, and they don't show up as much or they don't have as quick result for most people as compared to pec and bicep. But that's where the work is needed, back, tricep. I recommend two to one, unless of course you're going to be a, a trainer or a bodybuilder or whatever, you need to have more balance. But for the rest of us, for spinal longevity and longevity of our body and brain and an upright posture, do twice as much back as pec, do twice as much tricep as bicep. And that is very important moving forward to keep ourselves healthy and to make sure that resistance exercise remains a part of our life just like it did for Jack LaLanne all the way up until age 96. I'm Dr. Scott Fuller. Please join me again.